Well, you should have read through chapters one through three and being, I hope, fairly confident. Uh, look at those terms there at the back of the book. They're all highlighted throughout the chapters. Make sure you know those terms and are comfortable with them. At the beginning of chapter one, there are a couple of terms that I think are important that I hope you have noticed. Like, for example, culture. What is culture? It's on page five. It talks about, um, it talks about the life of a group of people, including the symbols, like the cross they wear around their neck, or the values, uh, the priority they put on maybe hardworking uh, behaviors. It could be the way they celebrate um, Friday nights, or it could be artifacts, uh, things that they have in their home that symbolize faith or uh, their heritage. We've got all of these different aspects that groups of people share in common, and that is part of what determines their culture. You guys, it's not about skin color. It's not about that first appearance because you couldn't guess what kind of culture I'm from just by looking at me. A lot of people would guess I am American, but you don't go by the outward appearance. Instead, you consider the culture uh, that has had an impact on them. Uh, intercultural communication here talks about the fact that it's culture that impacts the communication between two people. How does my Canadian culture impact the way I relate to you as Americans? Uh, that's intercultural communication. International communication, on the other hand, is about media systems. So you need to know the difference in these terms as you're reading through. I hope you uh, discovered why you need to know about intercultural communication, why it's important to you. I can tell you one thing that jumped out at me uh, was about cross-cultural um, travel. Uh, I hope that you all are traveling. I do a lot of uh, leading of travel groups and I find it just fascinating to see students discover uh, the cultures that are out there. Uh, 12% it is increasing by 12%, well not in COVID, but typically a 12% increase because students are more and more traveling and need to know how to behave and communicate in different cultures. Then we moved on to chapter three, and again, lots of words that you're looking at, but we were looking at culture in chapter one, communication in chapter three, and communication here on page 51 talks about the process of behaving and interpreting that behavior. It could be verbal, it could be nonverbal, or mediated somehow, but communication is happening and how that actually happens. Um, and, and how it's about our values, it's about our norms. There's a couple of terms that I want you to really notice. Acculturation is when you merge, you take your own culture and when you move into another one, you merge into that culture and you adopt their values and cultures. But there's also the word that's called um, ethnocentrism. Okay, learn that word, ethnocentrism. It's saying I'm the best. So I could be very accultured. I have, I, I've, I've blended into American society, but still say that Canada's the best and I treat you all as inferior because you're American. And of course, that is not the attitude we wanna have. So get to know these terms, they're very important. That quiz opens Thursday morning, make sure that you take it, don't miss it. Um, and and um, I will see you later.